Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to review differentiation. First of all, let's start with summary of differentiation rules. Let's do one example of each and do tons of practice. Let u and v be differentiable functions of x. Some general differentiation rules. Constant multiple rule. The derivative of constant times function is constant time derivative of the function. What it means is, let's say we have y equals to 3x squared. Here our 3 is c constant and our x squared is like the function u. So we pull the constant to the front or we keep it in the front as it is and then we differentiate x squared only. And we know that this is going to be the power rule, so 2 comes in front, and we subtract 1 from the power. 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 minus 1 is 1, so 6x. Let's see some or difference rule. Differentiation is linear. So linearity means we're going to differentiate each term one by one. Let's say we have y equals to 3x squared minus 5x. Then we can differentiate 3x squared and negative 5x. So derivative of 3x squared is 6x, as we did above, minus derivative of 5x is 5. Let's see product rule. If we have a function like 3x squared times 5x, normally you could multiply directly and then differentiate because x is the same variable here. But for the sake of practice, we are going to use product rule here because in different examples, the multiplication might not be the same variable. So the rule says, u prime times v plus u times v prime. So you can consider 3x squared as u and 5x as v. So it's going to be derivative of the first function, which is u prime times v plus u times v prime. So derivative of the first function is 6x, the second function itself plus the first function itself this time times derivative of the second function which is times 5 and you need to simplify and clean up 6x times 5x is 30x squared plus 3 times 5 is 15x squared and actually you can combine them cause like terms so 45x squared Let's directly multiply and see this time that they are going to be equal. 3 times 5 is 15 and x squared times x is x cubed. Now we can differentiate 15x cubed. We can use power rule here. Bring the power to the front. Multiply with constant in front. So 3 times 15 and subtract 1 from the power. So 45x squared. So actually you can see that they are equal. But we did this example for the sake of practice. Let's do quotient rule example. Quotient rule, if you have a function over another function in the fraction form, then derivative of the first function times second function minus first function times derivative of the second one this time and divided by square of the second function which is v squared let's say we have a function y equals to 3x squared over 5x this is again directly divisible but for the sake of practice we will do quotient rule here but in different examples it's not going to be divisible and you directly have to use quotient rule. So the rule says u prime, which is, this is our u, and this is our v. 
u prime is 6x times second function minus first function itself this time times the derivative of the second function over the square of the second function. Now all you have to do is just simplify and clean up. So it's going to be 30x squared minus 15x squared divided by 25x squared. So you're going to obtain 15x squared here because they are the like terms over 25x squared. And if you need to simplify further, x squared cancels and 15 over 25 is 3 over 5. So the answer is 3 over 5. Or if you directly divide it and take the derivative, you obtain the same answer. Let's see different rules. Constant rule, for example. Derivative of the constant is 0. If you have y equals to 30, the derivative of 30 is 0. So y prime is equal to 0. y equals to pi. Pi is a number and it is a constant. So y prime will be 0. So don't confuse that this is not a variable. This is just a number. y equals to e. This is a constant. e is a number in math. So y prime will be 0. Let's practice general power rule. In the general power rule, uh, before this, let's practice simple, simple power rule. So we can understand this better. Simple power rule is, let's say we have 5x cubed. That suggests bring the power to the front and then subtract 1. So it's going to be 3 times 5 x to the 3 minus 1. So 15x squared. Okay, let's practice chain rule. Chain rule says if we have two function in composite form, first we take the derivative of the outer function, then take the derivative of inside function and multiply. For example, sine of 3x. Derivative of sine is cosine. We're going to see it here, but I would like to say now directly. Derivative of sine. So here our f function is sine. Our f function is sine of u. You can call this argument u. And our u function is 3x. So First, we're going to differentiate outer function sine, which is going to be cosine, cosine of u, which is cosine of 3x, times derivative of inside function. And derivative of 3x is 3. So it's going to be 3 cosine of 3x. We will practice chain rule in different examples. Let's see general power rule. In general power rule, this time we have a function and we have a power of that function. We bring power to the front and then subtract 1 from the power. But we have to multiply inside function as a chain rule. For example, let's say we have 5x squared plus 1 to the third power. So here we're going to apply power rule and chain rule at the same time. So we bring 3 to the front, keep inside function as it is, and multiply by the derivative of the inside function this time. So this is like our u inside. You can consider this as like u cubed. So u cubed will be 3u squared. And u was 5x squared plus 1. But this is going to be u, 3u squared times u prime. So here, if you distribute and clean up, you're going to get 
15x squared plus 1 times derivative of 5x squared is 10x derivative of 1 is 0 so this is the final answer if you multiply you're gonna get your final answer derivatives of trigonometric functions so I have drawn unit unit circle here and our x-axis is cosine x and negative x is negative cosine x you can remember this from the coordinates of a point the x coordinate of any point in in 2d is the cosine and y coordinate is sine so x positive coordinate is the cosine x x negative coordinate is the negative cosine x y positive coordinate is the sine x and y negative direction is negative sine x if you go to clockwise you get the derivative of each function so this is continuous derivative functions so derivative of sine of x is cosine x derivative of cosine x is negative sine x derivative of negative sine x is negative cosine x and likewise it is infinite if you go to counterclockwise you get the integral of the function which is the antiderivative of the function so that's the topic of integration we will see it there let's see four more trig functions that will be very useful derivative of tangent x is secant squared of x we can prove this actually using the quotient rule let's prove this one only after we have reviewed this derivative of cotangent x is negative cosecant squared of x derivative of secant x is secant x tangent x derivative of cosecant x is negative cosecant x times cotangent x so you need to know all of them by heart or else you have to derive it but it's gonna be time wasting in the test let's derive tangent x for now we know that tangent x by definition is equal to sine x over cosine x now we can apply the quotient rule we know that sine x is our like u cosine x is like our v and the rule was u prime times v minus u times v prime over v squared let's apply it now derivative of sine x is cosine x you can visualize here again derivative of sine x is the cosine x you're going to follow the blue arrow times v which is x and our u is the sine x and our v prime is the derivative of cosine x which is negative sine x times negative sine x all over v squared which is cosine squared of x now we can clean up we have cosine x times cosine x is cosine squared of x negative sine x times negative sine x is positive sine squared of x and we have cosine squared of x below by the trigonometric identity by the Pythagorean identity sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x is equal to 1 this is 101 identity so I can directly say without proving so we are obtained 1 over cosine squared of x again another 101 identity we know that 1 over cosine of x is equal to secant x so 1 over cosine cosine squared of x is equal to secant squared of x this is again identity and this is again identity so we have proved tangent x is equal to secant squared of x either using the quotient rule or directly memorizing 
Now let's practice all the rules. Okay, so we're going to differentiate each function with respect to x. So y, y equals to 5, so y prime equals to 0, because derivative of constant is 0. Let's go to example 2. Here we're going to use the power rule. So f prime of x, which is the derivative of x, is 18 comes in front of the function times 5 x to the 18 minus 1. So we subtract 1 from the power. So this is going to be 90x to the 17. Let's go to example 3. Here we're going to use some different some difference rule. So we're going to differentiate each function one by one. So y prime will be 20x to the fourth. 5 comes to the front and subtract 1 from 5 plus derivative of x is 1. You can either use power rule or you can directly say derivative of the variable is directly 1. Or you can think like this, x is x to the first power, bring 1 to the front, and then subtract 1 from 1, so it's going to be 1 times x to the 0, x to the 0 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1. Example 4 is again some difference rule. So we're going to use here power rule. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 minus 1 is 3. And derivative of 5x is 5. And derivative of 3 is 0. If you want to show negative 0. And then clean up 16x cubed minus 5. Question number 5 is not different from power rule. Just the power is fraction it's okay. So y prime is equal to, we bring power to the front, multiply with, if we have any, con any constant in front, and we subtract 1 from the power. So you can express 1 as 4 over 4, and then clean it up. So it's going to be 15 over 4, x to do 1 fourth. If you need to express it in radical, then 15 over 4, 4 power, index number 4 or in radical x. Here again, we apply, we're going to apply power rule, but the power is fraction. It is okay. So y prime is 2 thirds comes to the front times 5 over 4, x to the 2 over 3rd, subtract 1, express it as 3 over 3, and then 2 times 5 is 10, 3 times 4 is 12, this is actually 5 over 6, times x to do negative 1 third. And if you need to express in radical, you can always 5 over 6, you can make x to the 1 third positive power, and then 5 over 6 cubic one of them is the answer, whatever form you see. Example 7. Again, power rule. Negative 5 comes to the front. So negative 5 times negative 4. x to the negative 5. We subtract 1 from the power. So this is going to be positive 20, x to the negative 6. So be careful if you have negative power. You are still going to subtract 1. Here, you can express 3 over x cubed as 3 times x to the negative third. You can take it up and then make it negative power. And then apply the power rule. So it's going to be, it's going to be negative 3 comes to the front times this 3 here and x to the negative 3 and subtract 1. So it's going to be negative 9 x to the negative fourth. This is again power rule, so we bring two thirds to the front, and then we subtract one from the power, two third x to the negative one third. If you don't see it in the answer choices, then it's going to be two, three times x to the one third. And if you don't see this in the answer choices, then it means 
you need to convert it into radical form. Let's see this one. This time we're going to convert from radical to the ex exponent. So it's going to be negative 2 x to the 1 fourth. And we are, we're going to apply the power rule. 1 fourth times negative 2 x to the 1 fourth minus 4 over 4. This is 1. So it's going to be negative 1 half x to the negative 3 over 4. And if you don't see this in the answer choices, it's going to be negative 1 over 2 times x to the 3 fourth. Or you can convert this into radical as well. It's going to be negative 1 over 2 times 4 index x to the 3rd. Let's see this example. Again, we're going to use power rule. 4 comes to the front, multiplies by 2 thirds, and we subtract 1 from 4. And derivative of 5x is 5, minus negative 3 comes front, and we subtract 1 from power. Now you're going to clean it up. It's going to be 8 over 3, x to the third plus this is going to be still plus 15x to the negative 4. Okay, I'm leaving question number 12 to you because it's the same logic as number 11. You can, you can comment your answer below. Differentiate each function with respect to the given variable. This is again power rule, so y prime is negative 3 times 5 r to the 5 minus 1 and 2 times negative 5 r to the 2 minus 1 we bring power to the front and subtract 1 this is going to be negative 15 r to the 4th minus it's going to be plus negative times negative 10 r here if you have a function like this first rewrite it as 3 s to the negative 2 take this above minus 4 s to the negative 4 now you can apply the power rule if you have fractional power it's okay again you bring to the front and subtract 1 from the power and you can express 1 here as 2 over 2 and you can express 1 here as 5 over 5 if you have radical form then you can convert it into power. So square root of 2 means 2 to the 1 half because we have understood 2 here. If we have cubic root of s it means s to the 1 third and plus 2 is again 2 to the 1 half and then this is s to the 1 fifth. Now we can apply here product rule and here again product rule and all together is the sum rule. Let's do this example because this is interesting. So power rule suggests u time u prime times v plus u times v prime. So u is here our 2 to the 1 half and our v is s to the 1 third. Here our u is 2 to the 1 half our v is s to the 1 fifth. Okay, u prime. So we're going to in differentiate this. 1 half, 2 to the 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. Times v, v is s to the 1 third. Plus u itself, which is 2 to the 1 half. Times v prime. So v prime is the def derivative of s to the 1 third as 1 third minus 1 is negative 2 thirds and you, you leave it in this form because there is no like term here and if you don't see this in the answer choices then convert back to radical form okay let's practice a little bit quotient rule if the function is x over x plus 1 then what is y prime then y prime is so here 
the function above in the numerator is our u, the function in the denominator is our v. In, in different formula notations, it could be f and g. It could be like f prime g minus f g prime over g squared instead of u and v. Okay, so we're going to apply u prime times v minus u times v prime over v squared. So derivative of x is 1 and second function itself minus second first function itself x times derivative of the second function. Derivative of x plus 1 is 1. Derivative of x is 1. Derivative of 1 is 0. All over x plus 1 the quantity squared. All you have to do is just clean up x plus 1 minus x. So here x cancels x, x plus 1 minus x. So we have only 1 above and 1 over x plus 1 the quantity squared. This is the final answer. Let's see this example because here we have chain rule, power rule, quotient rule all together. So our numerator is our u and our denominator is our v and our formula is u prime times v minus u times v prime over v squared. So u prime, we're going to differentiate numerator. We're going to apply first power rule, bring 3 to the front, keep the inside function as itself, subtract 1 from the power and multiply by the inside function because this is the chain rule and derivative of inside function is 2x so this everything here is just u prime times v v is x squared plus 1 minus we are here now u which is the function itself times v prime v prime is derivative of x squared plus 1 which is 2x everything over x squared plus 1 the quantity squared now all you have to do is just distribute take the power distribute combine the like terms if you need to expand this you're going to expand or leave it like that let's see if we have interesting example we can we can check this one again u prime times v minus u times v prime over v squared. Derivative of the numerator is 9x to the 8 and v is radical x squared minus 1 minus u itself which is x to the 9th minus 1 times v prime. So we are going to differentiate the denominator. So you need to express x squared minus 1 to the one half. So you're going to apply here power rule and chain rule. You bring one half to the front, keep the inside function as it is, subtract one from the power which is going to be negative one half times the derivative of inside function which is 2x. So this everything will be here. All over radical x squared minus 1 the quantity squared and here you need to clean up I'm leaving these questions to you for your practice you can pause you can take notes and then solve you can comment below let's see a little bit product examples here the examples are not interesting because we have the same variable that we could directly multiply and then take the derivative but here we can't because because we have power here let's do this example so product rule is u times v u prime times v plus u times v prime so this is our u this is our v if you're able to decompose the function it's going to be a very big power for you it's going to be very good for using quotient, power rule, especially chain rule. 
Okay, let's do this. Derivative of x squared is 2x and the second function x itself x plus 7 third power plus u itself which is x squared and then derivative of x plus 7 cubed here we're going to apply power rule bring 3 to the front x plus 7 subtract 1 from 3 which is 2 and multiply by the inside function derivative of x is 1 but if you need to show your work you can write here 1 and then if you clean this up using the order of operation it's going to be good. So let's see if we have interesting example. Here we know how to take the derivative of radicals. We're going to use here difference rule. We're going to use here sum rule. But all over we're going to use the product rule. And this is our u, this is our v, this is our u, this is our v. Here we're going to apply product rule. And here we're going to apply the power rule and chain rule. Okay, let's see chain rule examples. If y equals to x cubed plus 3 the quantity fifth. So here we're going to apply power rule and chain rule. So bring 5 to the front. Subtract 1 from 5, which is 4 times derivative of inside function or you can think like this this is our u and you can consider it as u to the fifth so what is the derivative of u to the fifth u to the five u to the fourth times u prime right so we're going to do same here five times inside function subtract one from the power times derivative of inside function which is 3x squared here again, we're going to apply power rule and chain rule. Bring 3 to the front, negative 3x to the fifth plus 1, rewrite everything, subtract 1 from the power, times derivative of inside function, which is negative 9x squared, if you use power rule here again. So here, this is our u. You can consider this as u cubed and then u cubed is 3u squared times u prime and then bring u back and then differentiate here again this is our u so this is like u to the fourth and u to the fourth if you inter if you differentiate you're going to get 4u to the third times u prime and you can bring u back here you can consider the argument inside of radical is our u. So fourth index u, you can rewrite it as u to the one fourth. So it's going to be one fourth u to the subtract one from one fourth, it's negative three fourth times u prime. Here negative two x squared plus one is our u. So square root of u is like u to the one half. And one half u subtract one from one half is negative one half times u prime. Again, here our u is this argument inside. Our u is here inside. Here we have u substitution here, power rule, chain rule, and altogether the product rule. So Question number nine practices everything. Here we have power rule, chain rule, and then quotient rule. So question number nine and number ten practices product rule, quotient rule, sum rule, difference rule, power rule, and chain rule, everything. Here again, we have chain rule, power rule, u substitution. Okay. So let's see another examples. This time we are going to practice trigonometric differentiation. We have proved tangent of x in, in the previous screen here. 
we have proved tangent of x is equal to secant squared of x. You can prove cotangent of x, secant x and cosecant x using the basic definition of trigonometric functions. We know that secant x is 1 over cosine x. And then I leave question number 2 and 4 to you. Now let's find the derivative. dy dx is a different notation of saying y prime. Let's find secant of 4x. Okay, let's go to our main secant of 4x. Here you need to know first of all derivative of secant x is secant x tangent x. Here we're going to use secant of 4x. We're going to use chain rule. You can make here u substitution. So you can call 4x is u. So this can be expressed as secant of u. So what is secant of u? Secant of u is secant u tangent u. Secant u tangent u because we know that derivative of secant is secant x times tangent x. So derivative of secant u is secant u times tangent u. However, we need to multiply it by u prime. And our u prime is derivative of 4x. So let's bring u back. So secant of 4x times tangent of 4x. Everything times derivative of u prime, which is 4. So it's going to be 4 times secant 4x times tangent 4x. Let's see another example. Here we have product rule that we can use here. We have quotient rule. Let's do question number 14. Let's do number 6, interesting ones. We can do number 18. And I leave all others to you. They are all easy. We can do number 12 actually, it's interesting. Okay, let's start with number 6. Tangent 3x minus cotangent 3x. Tangent 3x minus cotangent 3x. So if y equals to, our function is equals to tangent 3x minus cotangent 3x, then what is y prime? We know that derivative of tangent is secant squared of x. So secant squared of 3x, however, times the inside function, cause chain rule, 3. So we are done with this part. Minus. We know that cotangent, by the definition, cotangent of x is cosine x over sine x. Because we know that cotangent is equal to 1 over tangent. And we know that tangent is sine over cosine. So 1 over sine over cosine is cosine over sine. So cotangent x is cosine x over sine x. Here we are going to use the quotient rule. So here our cosine x is our u, our denominator is our v. So u prime times v, u prime, derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. Again, I would like to show you. Negative cosine x go to this direction, you get the negative sine x. So here, let me write the formula, u prime times v minus u times v prime all over v squared. Now let's bring everything back. u prime is negative sine x. But here, negative sine of 3x times 3, because we have here chain rule at the same time, times v. v is here sine x, but here sine of 3x. This was just to give you the definition. Our angle is 3x. Minus, 
let's make a space here. Okay. Minus u times v prime. U is cosine of 3x. And v is sine x. And derivative of sine x is cosine x. Sine x is here. You go to the clockwise, you get cosine x. So derivative of sine x is cosine x. So we're going to obtain here cosine of 3x. All over sine of 3 sine squared of 3 of x because we're going to square it now we're going to clean it up and this everything will be here so we have negative 3 sine squared of 3x minus cosine squared of 3x all over sine squared of 3x here you can you can convert it back using some identities you can separate it like negative 3 sine squared of 3x over this is the common denominator for both sine squared of 3x minus cosine squared of 3x over sine squared of 3x so this cancels exactly the same thing so we get negative 3 here minus cosine over sine is cotangent but this is squared so it's going to be cotangent squared of 3x So this is the this is the result what you get from the quotient rule. And then if you put it here, that's gonna be this is gonna be the total final answer for derivative of tangent 3x minus cotangent of 3x. Let's see another interesting example. We have sine x times tangent x. So if y is equal to sine x times tangent x. Here, don't do directly product rule. Convert tangent into sine over cosine. Or just check all possible combinations, whichever is, whichever looks doable easier. So, if we rewrite tangent as sine x over cosine x, so our numerator will be sine squared of x because we have sine x times sine x, sine squared of x over cosine x. Now you can apply the product rule. This is our u and this is our v. Okay. So u prime. Derivative of sine squared of x is 2 sine x times the derivative of sine, which is cosine of x. You can also consider this as like u squared if you do u substitution here so u squared is 2u times u prime and here u is the sine and derivative of sine is cosine so 2 sine x cosine x actually this is the double angle identity for sine so this is sine of 2x So you can express 2 sine x times cosine x as sine of 2x by using the double angle identity. So we did u prime, which is sine of 2x, times v itself, which is cosine x, minus u itself, which is sine squared of x. 
times derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. all over cosine squared of x. So if we clean up with that, this is sine of 2x. Sine of 2x cosine x. Minus sine squared of x so it's going to be plus. So this is again we're going to have here sine squared times sine is sine cubed of x all over cosine squared of x. You can separate you can separate it because this is the common denominator and then simplify further if it is doable. Let's see what other examples we have. Here we're going to apply again quotient rule. So this is going to be R U, this is going to be R V, and we know that derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. You can use the unit circle like cosine negative sine negative cosine and sine positive this is quotient rule you can express tangent x as sine x over cosine x this is the quotient rule sine x over x that's the derivative of sine x over x is 1 you you're going to prove this in calculus too This is the product rule. You can express cotangent as cosine over sine. This is the chain rule. Chain rule. All right. So those are the basics of differentiation. You need to practice more of each rule and you need to practice advanced trigonometric derivatives. And the more you practice, the better you will be in differentiation. Good luck at your studies. Thank you for watching.